Welcome back, everyone. So, this week we have Aerozol, a top down Zelda like made in the Pixel Game Maker and the end. So, enough talk, let's just dive right on in. So, you are an adventurer named Mia in the cave that has a, rec a reputation of bringing recognition and riches within. Your goal is to, well, have said treasure and recognition and to get the hell out of the cave. A pretty simple plot through and through. The presentation narrows the top down Zelda look in terms of the pixel art and the, well, sound effects and the music. Unfortunately, you can't really hear the sound effects and music due to the sound of my voice and how I recorded it. So, yeah, but do play it for yourself to experience it or just watch it on YouTube. Now for the gameplay. As previously mentioned in the intro, this game is made in Pixel Game Maker ND, and if you've been in the show for a good while now, you know that this game, Finjin and I, have a bit of an iffy relationship, because for some reason, whenever people make a game in this engine, they have a bit of a boner for making difficult slash frustrating level design, or any kind of design in general. And this game has it in fucking spades. We have dickhead level design, dickhead enemy placement, and just dickhead enemies in general. Like, legit, the level of frustration I feel, I am not afraid of admitting. I have rage quitted this game two times already. Rosalind, can't hurt you no more. It is not you that is bad. It's the enemies and level design. Some of the enemy placement and side-scrolling segments are bullshit. Like, legit. What happened here? Did none of the playtesters? Because yes, this game was playtested by different people. And one of the guys was probably saying, hmm, probably make it not hard enough. Now, let's go over your arsenal. You have a basic sword, which you can eventually level up to have some form of a charge attack, which I'm going to be honest with you, I barely use until the end game. You have a bow, which you can level up, later level up to a mithril bow, which you'll need to fight the Cthulhu style monster there. Trust me, I I already knew that already. And let's be honest here, it's just an obvious upgrade. You, you go from a regular bow to a mithril bow. That's just obvious. You have bombs, which are awesome. And you have this nearly useless shield ability. Now, with the shield, it's alright. The shield itself protects you from projectiles. However, when it comes to charging slash melee attacks, you're basically shit out of luck and you can't move direction while you're moving your shield so let's say you're facing the right but an enemy is coming right behind you you can't move to that place where the enemy is going to shoot you so that's a thing that or ir irks me a lot in fact quick thing turn on resurrection fuck dignity and fuck honor if you're just trying to play the game and trying to get none of the cgs your ass just needs to survive just just turn on resurrection mode it will save you a ton of time now for the bosses. The bosses in this game are mostly a miss. Except, except for one, the saving grace called the living armor. The living armor in this game actually feels like a, te a proper test of my skill and ability so far. It doesn't give you any bullshit attacks. It doesn't give you anything that bounces at you like the damn plant boss. When it does bombard you with a bunch of shit, you can at least block it or dodge it properly. You could be, you could say the same arrest for it, but here's the thing. This thing actually allows actual proper breathing room. I like this, but the rest can go suck a dick, especially the damn spider bro boss. Don't be like me and brute force it. Just chuck bombs all day. Overall, I really can't give this game a, a recommendation. Hell, not even a cautious recommendation. The amount of frustrating bullshit that happens in this game is not even worth it in my honest opinion. But until then everyone, good night and good luck. If you enjoyed this video and wish to see more of Overlord content, please like, comment, subscribe, and the bell for both uploads and community posts. Also follow him on social media such as Twitter and Pixiv.